Potato onions are ready for harvest. These are mostly yellow potato onions, but I planted some other stuff too, a couple of shallots, and then the green mountain multipliers were down there where that watering can is. They are already out and curing for a couple weeks. So these will be harvested today and then cured for a few weeks, and then I'll start selling them on eBay and maybe on the website too. So as you can see, you plant one and several grow. So if I kind of dig this up, this one has about eight, nine bulbs in it. This cluster has five in it. This one has three. They average about five or six, but it depends on what you're planting. Large onions produce a bunch of small onions, and if you plant a small onion, it produces just a few large onions. So I try to save the big ones to plant for to get lots of little onions because that's really what I want to be selling. Um, they're easier to deal with, easier to ship. They actually seem to keep a little bit better too. So today we'll be pulling these out and getting the curing process started. Okay, so here's the uh, onions from this one big bed, and it's quite a bed. It looks like more than it is, cause, of course, because of all the leaves. Time to trim some onions here. I like to cut them about half an inch short, cut off the small roots, and then peel off any real loose skin like that. Now some of the onions you're gonna feel like there's uh, more than one clove under the same skin. And those won't cure as well and they won't keep as well. So it's best to set those aside when you sort your onions for storage and either use them right away or Put them in a separate pile and use them first out of storage. What you really want is clumps like this where every onion is round and its own individual discrete bulb. Those will cure better and they'll keep better and they're also easier to process in the kitchen so there may be cultural ways to grow those more often. Um, I have not figured that out personally but um, I'm sure that's possible. I think the main thing though is we need to breed varieties that tend to grow that way more instead of growing clumped underneath the skin. And Kelly Winterton has made some progress for sure in that department with his Green Mountain Multiplier. And I'm also growing some seedlings and that's one of the main things I'm looking for. Like any, any onion that doesn't meet that criteria, I'll reject for sure. Now I'll peel off any skin that's real loose like this, but if I have an onion that's really much divided underneath the skin, I try to peel them open a little bit if it's easy. If it's not easy, then I don't bother. And then these ones that still have, you know, a lot of green on the top, I tend to throw those to the side and let them cure out a little bit before I trim them. Now there's a question too whether to break them apart. If they're really barely attached, I don't think there's any problem breaking them apart for storage. But you don't have to either, you can cure them in clumps. You want to lay these out in a single flat layer, one onion thick, in the shade. And I dry them on boards, probably ideally they'd be dried on screens. Um, but you know, I don't think it matters too much, they seem to do okay on boards, I guess. But there's going to be a certain amount of loss. I mean, you're going to lose a certain percentage in curing, that can range up to maybe 10 or even 15% in the bad year. And then you're going to lose some in storage too, but most of the ones that make it through curing will make it through storage pretty well. Again though, it's going to be these ones that are all clumped up under the skin and kind of not divided all the way that are going to go first. They're either going to spoil during curing or spoil during storage, or at least more likely. So eat those guys first and you should be doing pretty good.
they really keep remarkably well once they're cured out. They also braid pretty well, so you just take these and kind of break them apart or whatever, and then dip the dip these in water just once real quick, and then set them aside for a couple minutes, and just go ahead and start braiding. And that's a good way to store them if you don't mind doing the work, uh, because you know they have great air circulation. You can easily see what's going bad. The onions that spoil don't affect the other onions much. So that's good. Um, they're convenient. They look cool. You can bring one in and hang it in your kitchen and just kind of whittle away at it till it's done and then go grab another one. It is quite a bit more work to braid them, but um, yeah, it's pretty neat too. And kind of fun, I guess, maybe. I'm not very good at it. So I think that's about it. I'm listing these on eBay August 15th. Um, the Green Mountain multipliers are going to go real fast because I don't have very many. And they're going to be pretty expensive, I think, this year, probably, because I just don't have a lot of income. You know, nobody else sells them, so there's, you know, they're valuable, basically. And I don't have a lot of income through the year, so these onions are real important to me to stay afloat. And, you know, it subsidizes my research and educational activities here at the homestead. So um, anyway, I'm not trying to hard sell you either because I don't have any problems selling my onions out. So, you know, buy them, don't buy them, whatever you want. The next video will be on cooking these little guys. And I don't have a lot to say about that, but enough to, you know, make a short video, I think. Also, um, just a note, these onions are very small because I grew these small on purpose as seed onions by crowding them close together. So normally the average size would be bigger than what you see me working with here. Until I do the cooking video, I'll see you in some other video about some other self-reliancy kind of thing.